This is a spiritual place, one where long ago the people and religion of Tibet spilled down from the towering Himalayan plateau and settled in the rugged mountains of northwest Yunnan. These snowy ranges contain panoramic vistas and an ancient culture not too different from the mountain paradise described in James Hilton's Lost Horizon. The high altitude polar winds made for a brisk morning, and I could feel the thinness of the air in my lungs. But a temple sheathed in gold gleamed like fire in the intensity of the morning light. This was my welcome to Yunnan's Tibetan country. The monastery shining in the sun is often called the Little Patala Palace for its resemblance to Lhasa's most famous religious complex. Songzhenlin Monastery is the most important Tibetan Buddhist temple in southwest China. Befitting of this, the roof is entirely plated in gold, and carved animal motifs keep watch over the distant peaks. Below, at the foundation, 108 auspicious numbered columns support the massive structure. Kanshina but above all, Songzhenlin is a place of worship and of training. At any given time, dozens of novice monks study here, with the goal of one day becoming full-fledged initiates. Of all the art and decoration adorning Songzhenlin Monastery, perhaps the most important are called Tanka. These are painted representations of the Buddha, seminal moments from his life and teachings. Sacred pigments are used to create Tonka, including dyes made from precious stones such as gold, silver, and cinnabar. Each step of the process follows strict guidelines concerning geometry, proportionality, and what must be painted first, second, or last. The learning curve is steep. Each step, its own form of meditation. These delicate works of art can take anywhere from a few months to several years to complete. And while students practice this form of painting, they also study ancient sutras, calligraphy, and Buddhist history, all in an effort to inch closer to spiritual enlightenment. A symbol of that striving for merit and the ultimate goal of nirvana is perched high above Shangri-La Old Town. At the top of the hill in Turtle Mountain Park sits the world's largest gold-plated prayer wheel. It stands 21 meters tall and weighs more than 60 tons. Just like accruing merit, spinning it is no easy task. From ancient traditions to a new one, I left the city behind to visit the Shangri-La Brewery. This three-year-old facility embraces the old and the new, churning out craft beer using traditional Tibetan highland barley and pure water from local springs. In here in Shangri-La, you, if you really want to help the local community, it's not good culture. So, because the farmers, they, they plant so much sinker or the stuff, but they cannot really sell it. I didn't know about that, so yeah. it's harder to sell the greens. Too. Yeah, so they call, they're saying to us, 
Hey, the brewery is a great branding idea because you can help the local farmer. You also cook beer, you can feed the cows. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. There is one more stop on my list here, an oddity gurgling out of these rugged mountains. Like something from a fairy tale, the white terraces of Bai Shui Tai stand out against the surrounding green of the forest. They are the product of mineralized water bubbling slowly from the ground. But the local Nashi people say the formation was created by the gods to replicate the rice terraces in heaven and to teach humans how to farm. Shangri-La is deserving of its name, a place of deep spiritual resonance, windswept mountains, snow, and welcoming people. It is a place set apart, both literally and figuratively, from the rest of you. Thanks for watching. This was just one of the many incredible places I got to visit on my month-long journey across UNET. Like, share, and explore the rest of the province with me in this 12-episode series.